Hello everyone, this is Colin once again. I know you're probably all getting sick and tired of me refuting Ahmed's Quran 3 on the topic of Muhammad and circumcision. But, you know, I there's just something about Ahmed's Quran 3 where once I start refuting him and showing him to be a lying deceiver, it, it just stays with me for a while. You know, I, I go through, I go back, and I check all the references needed um, to see if I've missed anything, if there's anything I could add things of this nature. Well, this search really began after I made my newest video, and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, in the description section I will post the links to the first two videos regarding Muhammad and circumcision which refute Ahmed's Quran 3. Now, I want to mention a couple things. First off, I found a book amongst my library, you can see some books behind me here, um, and this book I'll put in the camera. This is The Prophet Muhammad, a biography by Barnaby Rogerson. Now, Barney Rogerson is a historian. He's uh, he's written several books about travel, um, about history, and things like this, and he wrote this biography of the Prophet. Now, he bases his research off of the most authentic sources, not just theologically, um, but history, sociology, anthropology. He's done a great job in, in um, essentially uh, describing the life of the Prophet on so many different levels. It's such a great biography. And I wanted to mention here, on page 48 of his book, about the last paragraph down, he says, The age of eight marked a powerful change in the life of the Bedouin boy, meaning Muhammad. It was one of the major thresholds of manhood. The ancient Semitic ritual of circumcision marked the transition from boyhood to youth and was an excuse for feasting and public celebrations. Curiously, considering the essential part it plays in the life of the Muslim male, there are no stories about the Prophet's circumcision, while that of Jesus is marked by a festival in the Christian calendar. Some obscure little religious booklets might suggest that Muhammad's circumcision was performed by angels, but there is no more than pi that is no more than a pious thought. Muhammad would probably have been circumcised at the same time as w as one of the sons of Abu Talib. After circumcision, the boys could sleep on the male side of the tent, would no longer eat in the extended genesium that scented Bosni competitive networks of aunts, mothers, stepmothers, and grandmothers, but would probably take their place around the communal play platter of the men. No longer smothered with kisses and tension, they would take grave satisfaction in existing silently on the bottom rung of male society. At this stage in life, it was their privilege to listen to to serve. This new status was reflected in a change of animal husbandry. Gone were the days spent looking after the sheep and goats. If he was fortunate, a youth would, ha would now devote himself to the lord of the desert, the king of the beasts in the Arab world, the camel. For a boy, this was true glory indeed. End quote. That's from page 48 to to page 49. Now, of course, the uh, other comments mentioned are, of course, his opinion. However, um, I just wanted to point that out, that here we have someone who has written a biography of the Prophet Muhammad who mentions the concept of circumcision based on authentic uh, sources, uh, whether it's theological or, or sociocultural. Um, so having established that even further, I would like to add another thing. I've previously made two videos entitled Hater Exposed Part 1, or excuse me, Hater Exposed and Hater Exposed 2, where I've proven that Ahmed's Quran 3 will plagiarize from sources. He will plagiarize, uh, and he will read off, he'll just read off of things and not give credit where credit is due. This is called plagiarism. I've established that he is a liar and that he plagiarizes on two other occasions. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is Hater's Hater Exposed Part 3. And how ironic that this should come from the topic of circumcision. Now, this is really entertaining because I simply Googled, and you can do this for yourself, I simply Googled Muhammad's circumcision. I'll do it again here. Uh, Muhammad's circumcision. And you'll see what comes up. In fact, the first one is a books from Google.com. And the title of the book is Male and Female Circumcision, Medical, Legal, and Ethical Considerations in Pediatrical Practices, edited by George C. Denston, Frederick Mainsfield Hodges, and Marilyn Fire Milos. Now, why do I bring up this book? What, what is the point of this? Uh, the point of this is to establish that uh, Occam's Quran 3 has plagiarized from this book. Uh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he has plagiarized from this book with regards to um, circumcision. Now, how do I know this? How do I know that he has uh, done this? Uh, because, as I've caught him before, 
I will start reading an article after watching his video uh, or reading a book, and as, as in this case, and uh, come to find out that, uh, well, uh, Aquaman's Quran 3 uh, has plagiarized from this book. Uh, based on the fact that I start reading things and uh, come to find out <laughs> that they start sounding oddly familiar. Now, if you go to his first video, okay, his first video about this, part A, let me read to you what this says. It, he says, now I'll read to you and then I'll tell you that this is basically what he, what he plagiarized. It says, very strangely, he says, I think he says unusual, though, and his style is to change a couple words around. There are no references whatsoever to either male or female circumcision in the Quran. Muslims generally, excuse me, he says Mohammedans, but it says in the real text, which he plagiarized from, Muslims generally ignore this fact. The word circumcision does not exist in the Quran, and this book does not even mention Abraham's circumcision, even though it does honor Abraham as the first Muslim in a mall for believers. Then he says some other garbage, and then he says, then he continues to plagiarize. And the only explicit references in the Quran are the two verses 2.88 and 4.155, where the term uncircumcised is used in reference to the Jews in a metaphorical, non literal sense associated with their hearts. Kulabuna kulafuhun. And then, he quote, and, then, and then he quotes it and things like this, and I, I mean, seriously, he continues plagiarizing this for, for quite a while. Even his reference in Genesis, which I thought, you know, hey, he must have done that, his research for himself to find Genesis. Uh, this author and editors actually include that part of Genesis in this description, in this chapter. So here you have Aquaman's Quran 3, once again, plagiarizing um, from a book. So really, I actually, you know, was trying to give him credit and come to find out that he um, failed uh, once again to come up with his own research. Um, again, he's just plagiarizing from other people's work and not giving them credit, which makes, him, which makes him a liar and a deceiver. But furthermore, he read this part. It makes a big sting about this. And he says again in his first video that this is not part of the Sunnah. That's ridiculous, because this book, and I'll post the link in the description section, this book goes into great detail about Muslim scholars discussing the sunnah of circumcision. So for him to sit there and go, this is not part of the sunnah, or this is not explicitly mentioned in the sunnah of the prophet, etc., is bogus. And what's even more embarrassing is that he is reading from a book which 20 pages down, give or take, goes into great discussion about this. So, what the hell is he talking about? In fact, if you look at section 3.2.2.2, Circumcision of Muhammad, it says there are at least four contradictory versions concerning the circumcision of Muhammad. Imam, Imam Malik reported in his book, A Saying of Muhammad, that states, For the sake of my honorable position with God, I was born circumcised, and nobody saw my pendulum. This is confined by Ibn uh, Abbas, who stated the messenger of God was born circumcised with his umbilical cord cut. Like Abraham, the myth of Muhammad is one of the prophets who was born circumcised is clearly of Jewish origins. Again, these are not my words, these are the words of the book, which I'm giving credit to. Another hadith, Muhammad had been circumcised by the angel who opened his chest and purified his interior. This is mentioned in uh, one of my evidences from my first video on this subject. Muhammad's grandfather, Abu al-Matulab, circumcised Muhammad. When he was seven days old, made a feast for him and named him the reference to the seventh day, including the birth of clearly Jewish, Jewish circumcision on the eighth day, including the day of birth. And then the last, Muhammad was born uh, incompletely circumcised. His grandfather cut what remained of his foreskin. Okay. And so this would coincide with what I mentioned from the book from Mr. Rogerson. So I'll post this, the link. I'm going to post this, the next couple links uh, in the description section. Uh, part one and part two of Muhammad and Circumcision. Please watch those for more evidence and for more information which refute Ahmed's Quran 3. Uh, the other two links will be my previous videos called Hater Exposed, uh, where I've proven that he's been plagiarizing from people and things like this. And the last one will be a link to this book, which I highly recommend to those out there who are interested in the subject. Now, please remember uh, that uh, th this, this is edited by, by some non-Muslims, and so the reflection of this, uh, including the author, who I do not know even, don't even know who the author is, could have a bias. So please take it with a grain of salt, but nonetheless, the information is very fascinating for those of you who are interested in circumcision and Islam. So here I am giving my credit, where credit is doing, like Aquaman's Quran 3, who is a liar, who claims that his information comes from his own, that all his statements are his own, and things like this. Uh, wow, what a liar. So uh, thank you everyone for watching. Peace be with you all.